kind of suggested that something at the All-Star break or shortly after changed the mindset of this group. He talked about outside influences, tugs on different players. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it was directed about you. Mm -hmm. Did you feel anything? Did anything happen? Did anything change? Did anything go on at that time? No, none went on. You know, I twisted my ankle when I came back. Yeah. You know? He's talking other issues, though. He's talking about desire to play, desire to compete, keep going the way the first half went, rather than the physical injury. Desire to compete for me? Just the, 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 something went wrong with the team after the All-Star With the team? Well, I mean, you, you just have to look at everything. I have been healthy for the whole season. And not to put everything on me, but I have been healthy for the whole season. We were used to playing with our whole group. I think the only injury we had was Jose. And we were used to playing with a certain group of people. And uh, we were playing well at the time. I twist my ankle, I'm out. And that's when things kind of change. So I don't think it was the desire and outside influences. If outside influences get to you, then this isn't your profession. You know, they're always going to be outside influences. It's always been since I declared for the NBA. And they're always going to be there no matter what situation you're in. And they can come in more forms than one. So uh, I don't think it was outside influence. I think we just kind of lost a step because we weren't used to playing uh, without a full strength schedule. Well, not schedule, but a full strength team. Uh, Chris, just from a personal standpoint, I mean, there were things written, there were suggestions <coughs> that, you know, despite your injuries, that when you came back after the All Star break, you weren't the same. Whether they said you were trying to protect yourself, free agency, making sure you're healthy, you just weren't yourself. Mm -hmm. How do you react to that when people would talk like that? I don't know. I mean, what's the numbers? What was the numbers at the All Star break? I'm not sure. Personally? Yeah. Your numbers dropped the second half of the season. Oh yeah, I know that. You know what I'm saying? But it it was just I, I don't even know what my numbers were, but people have to understand. I had a decent season. I struggled after an injury. You know, that's plain and simple. I don't like to struggle. Is it fun? No, it's not, of course. I like being successful in games. I like playing to win. I like doing well. So struggling in games, that's really not something I'm accustomed to doing. It's not something I'm used to, but it happens. And I know that. So, you know, people just have to, you know, look at everything. You know, they have to look how it's been double teamed, uh, just trying to come back from the injury that I did have. And when I get my legs back, I got my legs back. And then right after, you know, I had my whole thing. So, you know, there's always going to be speculation. They're always going to be people trying to, you know, start stuff and whatever. You have to write something. So, are you going to uh, take as much time, like right up to July first, before you decide what you want to do? Are you like, going to, or do you think, like, you know, in the next two or three weeks, you can, you know, go to Brian and say, I'm going to not come back? You know? Nah. I mean, this is. I mean, you know, stay or go is a life-altering situation. So, you know, I've only changed my life twice. I was going to college and declaring for the league. And now I'm at this uh, at this point. And those took a long time. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. Is that what people forget about this? It's not just about money, it's about what you're gonna choose to do. Yeah. You know, basically with everything in your life for the next however long it's going to Yeah, I think I think people can get caught up, you know, people get caught up in sports, you know, it's money and you know championship and this and that but you know people have families people you know have lives we have lives so all those things are are always in consideration when you're choosing where to be is, is you being the number one option on a team a prerequisite for where you sign or is it just something that's nice to have it's something that's nice to have i think it's just something that, that no, that's nice to have just just to be a guy that's uh that um that organization builds around, I think I take pride in it. You know, it's, uh, it's not easy, it's hard work, but I mean, it's only the beginning. You know, I think it's, uh, it's kind of a, a stamp that's put on you, but at the same time, you have to uh, provide and, and do well with that. So it's only, it's kind of only the beginning of something if, if that's what you choose to do. Brian has overhauled the roster two years in a row now around you trying to make it work, it didn't work last week for me this year with, you know, Mm. Do you still have a lot of faith in his direction and what he wants to go forward? Well, I mean, uh, I think it's just talking about it. It's talking. I think um, always communication. I mean, with Hito, I, I 
I mean, looking back at it, who who wouldn't have thought you know signing he don't sign Jermaine wouldn't bring instant uh, success with it. But you know, it didn't work out like that. I think um, this year it was just trying to find out what was working, and I think Hedo struggling was kind of tough on him and tough on the team. It was just tough for everybody. So, I mean, just hearing it at first, you would think that it's going to go well, but sometimes it just don't go like you think. But when you signed this contract that you're going to be opting out of, mm -hmm. one of the things that Brian sold you on is he came to you and he said, I built a very good reputation in this league and I don't intend to screw it up. So to a certain yeah. degree, whenever you're putting your faith in management, you're putting your, your eggs in one basket. You're trusting this guy's going to build the right team around you. Mm -hmm. He hasn't. Mm -hmm. Do you still have faith that Brian Colangelo of Canada will build the right team around you that would allow you in Toronto to compete for a championship? Well, I mean, that's the question that has to be answered this summer. You know, uh, that's, uh, that's, I think that's a big part of it. Now, of course, everybody knows it's a big part of it. Um, that's part of the conversation. Talk about it, and, you know, if I still believe in him, yeah, you so, know. So he has to sell you again on him being able to do this? Well, of course, every GM <laughs> is going to try to sell their business. You know, that's what people have to remember. It's a business and everything. So, uh, you know, I'm in a position where everybody's going to try and sell me their business. Yeah, Chris, you look at, uh, you know, LA with Kobe and Cleveland with LeBron. Like, all these teams are looking like championship teams. And typically, uh, you're spending a lot more money than just up to the luxury tax threshold. Yeah. Um, do you have any belief this organization would be willing, should they sign uh, you? To, to surround you with additional players, you know, in perfectly well, your hometown of Dallas. Yeah. You know, they you spend over they spend over their mistakes. Yeah, you have to. Do you have any indication here that uh, you get that same respect? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I, we, I, that's something that I only really started thinking about. You know, this year, just looking as I gotten older, I've looked at um, you know other teams and their success and how they do their business in order to be successful. You have to jump over. It. I mean, the best teams in the league every year. You look at Denver, if you look at um, LA, Dallas, Cleveland, Orlando, those are the main teams, Boston. Those are the main teams you think about when you think about championship or when you think about playing in late May and June. Those are the teams that are playing. And they're well over. Say it's about winning. Um, do we need more in an ideal world if you could win here? Well, yeah, I think so. Um, just to be able to say, like, yeah, you know, things were tough, and but, you know, we stuck it out, and things happened the right way, and they got guys in here. You know, it's always the perfect storybook ending, and that's what people look for in basketball. It'll be a great movie. Chris, how's your summer shaking up? You know, playing for the national team, or what are you going to do? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I really hadn't even thought about summer. I kind of just sat there and blank state of mind last night uh, with my family at, uh, at dinner after the game and I just didn't know what was going to happen next so you know I got some free time on my hands I just have to figure some things out um, and world championships are one of them. Before you know when you're a young player and you think of the day you become a free agent you probably think it's an exciting time but is this almost a stressful time for you right now because you've got so much to like you said this is a huge huge decision that's coming up for you. Yeah, you know, it's what you make it. I'm not, you know, I'm not putting this as a stressful time. I, I want to have fun with it. I want to just have the best time I can have right now and just enjoy everything, enjoy every minute of it because you never know if it'll happen again. So, um, you know, these are exciting times. People, you know, people always tell me, a friend of mine always tells me, like, man, you have the greatest problem, but I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. So it's kind of... It kind of goes both ways. It can be stressful or it could be, or you can enjoy it. I want to enjoy every minute of it, so.